families still scratching their heads despite what Satya Nadella is saying. And they're asking, well, what's in it for Microsoft at this stage compared to what's in it for LinkedIn? Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I think it's a win-win proposition for both of them, uh, considering where they are in, on their product cycle and the business cycle. Uh, I think both of them benefit. Uh, more so LinkedIn, because as you saw from the last quarter's numbers, their revenues were kind of sputtering. Uh, their growth engine was kind of slowing down despite new product initiatives. Uh, and uh, Microsoft is always looking for uh, an edge. Uh, they're very big, and they've not had a good track record in terms of making acquisitions uh, such as these. But in this case, I think this will make sense because Satya is a different type of CEO. He seems to know exactly what he wants and where to take Microsoft. So there are a lot of uh, benefits uh, to Microsoft. They can really take LinkedIn's professional network uh, and really uh, blend it better with uh, Microsoft's tools. So you can see a lot of synergies uh, down the road in terms of both of them together as opposed to separate. I have, a, uh, I have a note here from Richard Windsor from Radio Free Mobile, and he points out at $255, per monthly active user, this is a very expensive transaction, which, which a lot of analysts are agreeing with. Uh, is this Microsoft's way, though, of focusing more on enterprise? I mean, is that the direction that they're trying to, to include more of in their portfolio? Hi, yeah, I think in, if you're looking for a financial uh, the rationale in this deal, you're not going to get it. It is, it is on the expensive side, but it's nothing for Microsoft. It has $117 billion in cash, and a $26 billion deal does not really move the needle that much. But I think it's uh, in terms of financials, and even on a financial basis, if you look at the numbers, it's 15 times 2016 EV to EBITDA, which is not very unreasonable considering that EBITDA is growing at 25%, expected to grow 25% LinkedIn's EBITDA. So I think you, you can find justification for making this acquisition. But what this deal does is really fill three holes in Microsoft's portfolio. Uh, it, it goes to the mobile initiatives, it goes on the cloud side, and it really enhances their cloud initiatives. Uh, and, and more importantly, it kind of enhances their social presence. Uh, and this is the professional network uh, social presence. So I think that's where Microsoft is lagging, they don't have a good social presence. I think this kind of brings that to the table as well. So on three areas, three important areas for Microsoft, which is social, mobile, and cloud, I think LinkedIn fits uh, very well in their portfolio. As I sit here uh, beavering away on Twitter, I mean, does, does a deal like this make it more likely that we might be looking at an acquisition for Twitter? Yes, I mean, Twitter has been uh, on, on the table for a long time. It has been rumored for an acquisition for a long time. Uh, I think uh, if, if it continues, I think people at this point are giving them the benefit of doubt and, it, and they're running out of patience. They think uh, they can regroup and come out because it's a great product at the end of the day. But can they survive on their own? And that's uh, being questioned at this point. So I'm, I can make a case for Google buying them. I can make a case for Facebook buying them. And with this acquisition, with this deal, I think that becomes more and more uh, realistic. And I take out Yahoo because in the past Yahoo was also in the mix, but I think that's out of the question. So I think between Facebook and Google, uh, you can see someone making a run for Twitter. Or Sensor. even uh, yeah. Microsoft. Uh, they have the Ooh. money to go after Twitter if they need it.